Today we'll replace a thermal fuse or thermistor and a defrost sensor. The thermal fuse or thermistor might look something like this. And the defrost sensor might look something like this. Empty your refrigerator and freezer and move the items to a working refrigerator and freezer. Turn off the circuit breaker or remove the fuse to your unit. Pull out the unit and unplug it. Make sure the unit is unplugged. Now remove the ice tray, ice cube holder, and freezer drawers. In this model, simply slide the drawer out, then when it is almost fully extended, lift up slightly and pull. Remove the freezer light cover by depressing a tab on the bottom, then pulling the bottom of the piece forward. To remove the drawer support rail, that's the piece with the freezer light in it, first remove two screws holding it to the ceiling of the freezer. Then gently but firmly slide it forward. Do not pull down. Two plastic tabs slide into metal brackets in the back holding the support rail up. You don't want to break those plastic tabs. Squeeze the clips on the two cable connectors and gently pull to disconnect them. Right down where they go so you'll know where they go when you put them back. To remove the evaporator cover, unlock the tabs starting with the three tabs on the bottom, then the two on each side, and finally the two on top. Be careful, you don't want to crack the cover or the freezer. Squeeze the clips on the two cable connectors at the upper left and gently pull to disconnect them. Right down where they go so you'll know where to put them back. Two screws and seven plastic tabs hold the rear cover in place. I like to wrap electrical tape around the tip of my screwdriver, making it slightly extended past the tip to help grab the screws. This helps to keep them from falling and to get them out of the deep wells. Remove the two screws. Now unlock the tabs, starting with the two on each side, then the three on top. Pull firmly, but be careful not to damage the cover or the freezer. It can be hard to get a grip on it. Once you have it loose, simply pull it out and you will see the evaporator coils. Squeeze the clips on the three cable connectors above the evaporator coils and gently pull to disconnect, right down where they go so you'll know where to put them back. When you're working with the coils and near them, be careful not to damage the coolant lines. Use a pair of needle nose pliers to detach the coils from the fins. You'll need to do this to remove the thermal fuse and defrost sensor. Gently bend the tabs, being careful not to break them. Gently dislodge the coils. You may only need to follow this procedure on the side the thermal fuse and defrost sensor are located. Remove the two screws holding the evaporator unit in place. Again, I used electrical tape on my screwdriver to prevent the screws from falling. Be sure to cover the drain on the bottom in case the screws do fall. This is the thermal fuse. After loosening the foam support along the side, pull the thermal fuse up through the coils and out. A check with my ohm meter reveals that it has indeed gone bad. A good one will send the needle to zero on the right. This is the defrost sensor. It's a good idea to replace both the defrost sensor and thermal fuse while you have everything torn apart. The defrost sensor is attached with two zip ties. I carefully slid the zip tie off that held the sensor to the coil. You can leave the old zip tie where it is. It's hard to reach and it won't cause any harm. I then used a tool to nudge the other one and rotate it around 
so I could cut it with a small multi-purpose wiring tool. After it's loose, pull the defrost sensor up through the coils and out. Place the new defrost sensor where the old one was. Use a long zip tie to secure it to the coil. You'll need a long zip tie to be able to reach it in the tight spaces, especially underneath the evaporator unit. Snip off the excess. Don't worry about securing it with a second zip tie. It's in a very difficult spot to reach, and one should hold the sensor just fine. Now slide the wire up between the coils and the foam support, right where the old wire was. Now put the new thermal fuse and wire in place. The manufacturer recommended replacing the old one with this new bimetal one, so that's why it looks different than the one I took out. Looks like this one will take up a little more room. Put the foam support back in position. Make sure the other wires stay free. If you spot any cracks on the surface, it's a good time to patch them up. I used foil tape, which can be found at home centers and hardware stores. I also used the foil tape to help re-secure the foam support. Here's another crack I patched. Next we will screw the evaporator back into place. I like to tape the screws to my screwdriver with electrical tape. This keeps the screws from dropping and it makes it easier to get screws into deep, recessed areas. Insert each screw and tighten them. Reconnect the three cable connectors. You do remember which goes where, right? What about your thermal fuse connector? What about your new defrost sensor connector? Use a couple of zip ties to bundle the wires together. Make sure they don't abstain the rear cover when you reinstall it. Push the coils back into place. Now bend the tabs on the fins to lock the coils in place. If you see any bent fins, now is a good time to straighten them as much as possible. Make sure the fan spins freely and works. Now is a good time to replace it if it is defective. Locate the tabs on the rear cover and make sure they line up with the slots inside the freezer compartment. Here are the slots in the freezer compartment for the rear cover. Make sure you line up the screw wells with the screw holes inside the freezer. The screw holes are here and over here. Make sure your bundle of wires nests into the recesses on the back of the cover and don't abstain it. Start with the tabs at the top of the rear cover. Then work on the sides and make sure everything fits firmly in place. Replace the screws. Again, I attach the screws to my screwdriver first with electrical tape. Reconnect the two cable connectors. 
you do remember which goes where, right? Locate the tabs on the evaporator cover. When putting it in place, start from the top, work down the sides, then snap the bottom in place. Notice how the plastic tabs in the rail support will slide back through the metal brackets. But first, reattach the two cable connectors from the drawer support rail to the receptacles at the top of the freezer. You do remember which wire goes where, right? Slide the plastic tabs in the rail support back through the metal brackets. Replace the two screws at the front of the rail support that attach it to the top of the freezer. Reattach the freezer light cover. The small hole in the top fits into a tab. Put the top in first, then snap the bottom tab into place. Put in the drawers and ice cube tray and ice cube holder. To insert the drawers, tip them up slightly to start, lower them until they are level, then slide them into place. Plug your refrigerator freezer unit back in, then move it back into place. Turn the power back on. It will take about 24 hours for temperatures to stabilize, so don't fill it full of food until you are sure it is working properly. If your refrigerator freezer unit is still having problems, you may have to replace the thermal fuse and defrost sensor in your refrigerator compartment as well.